I think it's a very much needed event, specifically that it's, uh, it comes just before the G20. And I'm hoping very much that the ideas that have been put here and the discussion will be summarized and indeed will be taken and given to the G20. Hopefully, the G20 will be able to use them and act upon them. They achieve in, uh, a great deal if they find a way of reminding people that it's not just housing that we want. We can all have bricks and mortar. Uh, it's not just medicine, it's not just a school teacher. Without the right, in constitutionally embedded, to uh, access the benefits of land, the, we can't abolish poverty, it just becomes impossible. I think what we've suffered from in the past is decisions being made from too narrow a platform. And I think this is an opportunity to really restructure a lot of our basic institutions and get away from a debt economy into really creating societies that work for each other and work much more sensitively with the environmental resources that we have. And when you're out in the open saying what you truly believe in and you find that there are 150 people who don't tell you you're an idiot, you suddenly get the confidence to keep saying what you're saying. And I think this feeling, this understanding has to grow that yes, humanity is a great species, very intelligent race, but it has made mistakes. For two and a half thousand years, humanity believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. For 400 years, it believes that women could be witches and they should be burned at the stake. You know, we believed all kinds of weird things. We believe for the last 60 years that GDP growth is the direction and solution to well-being. Look, let's accept that we make mistakes. The key thing is, do not be ashamed to speak about mistakes. Do not be ashamed to discuss the fact that, yes, sometimes we get things wrong. It's, it's a coming together of like-minded people. It's making input to important processes. Um, for me, it's an opportunity to, to, to see what's being said on the street. Um, I'm the economics advisor at UNAIDS, and I spend a lot of time worrying about what, what seem to be quite narrow issues. Now, I would like to hear what the human rights community is saying. Well, I think this, this Congress must be very firm in the way that it speaks to the G20 and ultimately to the leaders of the G8. And I think messing around, tinkering with with systems and processes is not going to cure and solve the problems we face. These are issues of moral character and virtue and judgment. And until people start talking in terms of justice and love and respect and courage and stop talking about uh, financial easing and so on and so forth, we're not going to solve these problems. Absolutely essential. I think all people often say United Nations are not much use, but I think the mere fact that people meet each other is so essential. We can talk to each other and realize that their divergences perhaps aren't as deep as they think. Well, I think I, I'm a great believer in networking, but this is actually about brainstorming. This is about practical solutions for really fundamental problems. And I would hope that with the experience that are represented in this room, that we can actually contribute something and feed in to the meeting that's going to take place here in London in April of the G20 and actually start a process which will mean that instead of financial crisis leading to even more poverty and deprivation to the people who can least afford to have more poverty and deprivation, it'll actually lead to a change in the system so that their needs are taken into account and addressed more thoroughly than perhaps they have been even in times of economic plenty.